All right. I thought I'd okay, um, ask first of all. Actually, um, Louise, I'm just going to start uh, first. <laughs> See if you can just um, okay. Go yeah. Ahead. Okay. Um, Okay, good evening everyone and welcome to Community Connect on Thursday. Uh, my name is Shingo Gibson Suzuki. I'm a Japanese teacher at Taylor Sake Secondary College, Melbourne, in Victoria and Australia. Um, I'd like to, uh, first of all like to thank um, Steve Hudson for letting us use the space um, to accommodate his educational webinar. Um, well, tonight we are going through um, formative assessment and through Used by CT, and it is my great pleasure to introduce Louise Norwood. Uh, she's an assistant principal from uh, the same school, and I'll let you uh, let her introduce what she's going to be going through. So, I'll just hand it over to you, Louisa. Thanks, Shingo. Um, welcome, everybody. This is my first time presenting in this uh, this format so <laughs> hopefully I know bear with me as I try to work things out. Um, I thought I'd just start by maybe giving a show of hands about who's pretty confident in using in understanding and using formative assessment. Uh, for those who have never used the, the Blackboard Collaborate, uh, if you have a look at underneath the participant, they should have a smiley face and the, the, the step away, and then the, the raised hand, and the, on the right hand side, you should have yes or no. So if you can just indicate while well, yes or no, would, um, whether you are confident or not. Okay. Thanks. So we obviously have yeah, some people are pretty confident and others not so. Um, perhaps people from Taylor's Lakes probably heard some of this presentation before. Um, but I'll just um, start off covering, I guess, a little bit of the basics of what formative assessment is about. Um, here's a definition for you. I'm not sure if you're aware of who Paul Black and Dylan William are. But um, inside the black box, the paper they wrote uh, quite a few years ago. Um, so one of the first things I read in respect to understanding about formative assessment, and it's well worth the read. But they're two educational theorists who've done a lot of work in this area. But so activities undertaken by teachers and students in assessing themselves that provide feedback to inform future teaching and learning. And we'll break that down. I'll break that down a little bit over the first couple of slides. Um, so just looking at you know what it is, it's really important. I think people look at you know formative assessment sometimes as maybe being a way that they can get feedback on the way they've taught a course and modify um, you know or use that to think about how they may teach the next cohort of kids they teach. But formative assessment is really about informing the learning of the current students you're teaching. Um, really shouldn't be an onerous task. It's part of the regular, you know, learning process and, and hopefully this P D will give people some strategies uh, that they can use um, to really, you know, not you know, go into their classroom, like I'm assuming we're all teaching, um, go into your classroom tomorrow and pick up and to be able to, to use quite easily. So it's about determining students' readiness for learning and it enables you to then, you know, really moderate you know, change the way you're teaching in order to meet the needs of, of the students in your class and it's feedback based. So very different I guess to what we know as summative assessment where we're just looking about a final, you know, final product on how a student have gone against the original learning objectives that we've had. Um, it's certainly not meant to be just some sort of add-on, you know, an extra thing that you have to do as a teacher. But I just wanted to make the point that this um, fits into the whole model of effective instructional practice. And again, I might just stop for a second. I'm talking. There's some, some names up the top there: Mazzano, Pollock, Hattie, McTee. Are people aware of um, of who those those um, those people are? Maybe a, a poll. Yeah, I'm just going to clear the the polls. 
for those who joined um, recently, if you have a look underneath the participant, you should have um, four different boxes, and on the very right hand side, you should have the box that says yes, no, or none. So if you could just um, click on yes, no um, button to indicate whether you are familiar. Okay, so again, it's good to see that you know, quite a few people have heard of um, these uh, these educational theorists, and, and I know a lot of the work I've done um, through doing TPL in the past, and the work we do at Taylor's H is based around um, around these people. So, do I'm assuming Shindo people can have access to this PowerPoint, or maybe if, I don't know if you're taking notes, but you can check out some of those names um, later on. Um, but these. Formative assessment is part of the whole effective um, instructional practice cycle, and it really to be you know the most effective. Hopefully, people are you know as part of their learning, part of their classes are setting clear learning intentions, um, assessing where students are at during the course of a lesson against the learning intention, providing feedback to move the students forward. To achieving that original learning intention or learning goal, um, they are really pivotal, really important. Is it, can I? Okay, it's not quite. Can people still hear that now? Is that better? Okay, so I've got the odds I'm hearing. Some people can hear and other people can't hear. Shingo? Okay, you're okay? Uh, well, if you want to just adjust your volume at the top where um, just it says video and there should be a volume button above the video. Okay, done that. All right, I'll continue, so we'll just move on. Next slide. Uh, Shingo, could you maybe just assist with what's happening with the PowerPoint there? Uh, which one are you after? Uh, so after the effective instructional factor slide? I think that. I'm just chatting all the the ones that he gave me. I think they're all the ones that he gave me. Uh, they're, they're all the ones that he gave me. Okay, well I put there's a couple more, but I'll just go with there then. Um, just in my experience, I'll just say with formative assessment, um, there's a number of strategies that you can use that you know. Very, very simple indications um, going into the classroom as you're teaching, stopping the class and seeing where the whole class is um, at, at their learning. Thumbs up, thumbs down, um, using A, B, C, D cards, uh, excellent clips that you can do at the end of at the at the end of the lesson. But one of the most, you know, I just wanted to mention that when I've spoken to teachers who have taken on formative assessment and you know, and I've, they've come back to me and they've said, you know, this is one thing that's really made a difference to my teaching. And when I say, why is that? I get the same thing people say is that I always thought, because I was teaching it, that the kids were understanding and were learning it. And until I stopped and actually did these different strategies, I never knew that actually so many kids hadn't picked it up. So I was moving on and I was leaving half my class behind. So by doing formative assessment, it enables you to, to find where each student is at their learning and then to address that. So to be able to differentiate, to think about what you're going to do next to ensure that every student is ready to move on with the class. And what you'll find, and unfortunately um, I'm missing a couple of slides here, but using um, formative assessment, 
does lead to not just improved learning outcomes, it leads to improved student engagement in the class. Kids feel uh, more confident, therefore they're more motivated. Um, and across juniors, if you're, talking, if you're teaching young kids or if you're teaching the most senior of kids, you will see um, very much a positive impact in what happens in your classes if you are um, using formative assessment as part of you know your the daily sort of teaching routine that you're running. Shiva, I'm going to pass that back over to you. Okay. Um, now I've got the the slide that says why use formative assessment um, as well as um, effective instructional practice. So, is there anything else you would like to add? This stage, or not at this stage. We'll keep going, and people have questions. I'll jump back in. Now, in terms of um, ICT tools, what I've I've actually done, chosen three ICT tools, which I think um, can be fairly easy to use in terms of formative assessment. And um, some of these you need to sign up, or you need the students to sign up. Some of these are uh, it's very, very easy to set up. Um, so I've got uh, three that I'd just like to go through, and then just um, do a bit of a web share, and um, so that way people can have a look at how I use in my class, as well as how you might be able to use whether you're primary or secondary setting. Um, okay, so the first part I have is the social media tools. Now, in terms of the social media tools, uh, in hang on, sorry, I'm just going to be able to uh, question. Sorry, AJ. Yep. Shingo, I just noticed my slides blank. I'm not seeing anything. Are other people seeing something, or is it that when you've copied your PowerPoint across, some of the elements that you wanted on the slides has not come across? Oh, okay. Um, I'll see if I can load the content again. Just there is in a second. Because he says, um, PowerPoint generating image, it's waiting for PowerPoint to start. I hope that it'll go through. Depending on what the items were on that page, well, impact on whether it actually copies across, um, certainly anything. Okay, so let's have a look and okay. see what happens. Now I have, now this one is the one that I went, that Louise went through. Uh, can you see the PowerPoint that says formative assessment? Yep, keep going. Uh, keep going. Yep, keep going. Okay, we didn't see that one last time when Louise was speaking. And the next slide, I think, is yours. Yeah, that's my slide. Do you want me to go back to it, Jingo? No, no. Uh, yes, <laughs> um, yeah, I'm, I'm going to actually get, get you to go, go back to that one if you um, don't mind. Yeah, I'll just quickly talk through this because I think it, it, it is useful. Um, but just thinking in a class as if you're the teacher and, and, and if you're the student. So if you're a teacher, you really need to, to think about what is it I want the students to learn this lesson. So not being so driven by the activities that you have to do, but what, what is the skills and knowledge that we want them to learn? And then how will you know who has learned it, how well, who hasn't and why? And then what are you going to do next if not everyone has learned it? Um, and for the student, if, so the students, are asking where am I going? So that is that the students need to know what your the original learning intention of the class is. So if you're not clear as a teacher, well, the students aren't clear. What is it that they're doing here? You know, what is it that I'm, I'm supposed to be learning? So a really clearly articulated uh, learning intention or goal for the students, perhaps written on the board, sets a very clear direction for the lesson. And then for students, um, are asking, well, how am I going? So where am I in relation to the learning intention? And that comes from um, formative assessment, student self-assessment, and the feedback that they're getting from the teacher. And that enables them to say, well, where to next? You know, what do I do? Where do I go to next? 
um, I think there's some, some sort of questions that are really important to, to keep in mind. And I'll just, that was the last slide I tried to, without having it in front of me, um, about why we use a formative assessment. Um, but that last little box down there uh, in the yellow about when you know your focus is really not so much just on measuring the final outcome, it's about moving every student forward in, in their learning. Now Shingo, now that I've gone through those couple of slides, I'll pass it back to you again for the ICT. Thank you. Okay, um, I've got the next one is ICT tools. Yes, um, and I was talking about the the different types of ICT tools in terms of what you can use as a teacher and what students can um, use in their classroom to just make sure that, um, you are um, testing and understanding, and it's just, it's not a summative assessment, so that you're not um, training your students to aim for the, the the end result. It's more to do with the um, just ongoing um, I guess improvement of students' outcomes. So um, I've actually chosen three, and in terms of what you can actually use with these, it's extremely simple to use, and um, it can be quite effective in terms of engaging students, and um, it's easy for students to use as well, because it's fairly familiar in terms of the social media tools, and the flashcards and online makers. Um, the first one I've got here is the social media tools. Now, in terms of social media tools, I'm just going to create a blank page, or actually, I might actually get you to um, just write down. Now, if you have a look at uh, just over here, you should have a little toolbars and the fourth one down is where you can put the, the text in. So if I can get um, people to just write, write down what you think are the social media tools, and <coughs> we'll just have a uh, start a bit of a discussion there. So I've got Twitter, Facebook, uh, Squology at Modo, and I've got blogs, wikis, and Google and Edmodo, Facebook. So these are, I guess, the the ones that it's fairly uh, familiar to all the students as well as teachers, and. In terms of the, the, um, the Facebook, I know a lot of the students are a, unable to use Facebook at school simply because of the, the fact that it's a, the social media tools and it's um, a lot of the, the schools view it as a distraction to the students learning um, rather than just being able to um, use it as school learning. So I'd um, like to just show you the tool I use, which is called a Squology. And within the Scology, what I do is a just a discussion forum. And in terms of discussion forum, what I have is just to set up a topic um, for each so, um, each of the things that I could um, I, I could actually use in terms of um, just a topic I have. So, for example, in um, as a Japanese teacher, I go through different grammar patterns or maybe the cultural aspect. And for the discussion forum, I create a specific topic where students can um, show their understanding and start a bit of discussion. So I'm just going to do an app share. And hope it's working. Um, now, it should start come up fairly slowly. But if you could see my screen, can you just give me a uh, just thumb up or smiley face. Mm 
Okay, good. So I've got a few people with thumbs up. Um, so what I have here is just a discussion with my year nine class. And as you can see, I've got the, your personal learning goals and the excursion feedback, which is the, just the, the, the feedback sheet I created, which is not really relevant to this one. And so I've got this um, the form verb understanding. This is uh, just a small discussion I've created for um, the students to show me that I've understood certain types of grammar pattern that I taught in that particular class. So I'm just going to click, and there's only like seven posts at the moment, but as you can see, I have students who have typed in the answers in terms of their understanding. So it's it allows me to see that they have understood certain um, concepts. And if you have a look at the fourth response, um, I've made corrections. So I'm giving the students feedback, instant feedback, and it's not a judgment, and it's not um, the giving them grade such. And once again, there's another one. Um, one student has shown a bit of issues, so I've made a correction. So as you can see, it's fairly um, kind of casual conversation rather than giving them um, the grade as such. I'm just going to come back into the upshare for now. Into the room. Here we go. Now, are there any questions so far with this one? Or does anyone else have any ideas? Or anyone else use the different types of discussion forum to get students understanding to make sure that they are they have any issues or they have any questions? Um, Jason, the school is free to register and you can get students to register as well for free. And the great thing about Schoology is that you can reset students' password just like you can do with Edmodo. And you can also do um, get the, the parents to be involved in the Schoology discussion. And also you can do um, the quizzes and you can do um, assessments and calendar events which all they um, come up in the students, the profile page. So it's very similar to Facebook. And uh, just keeping my eyes out for the chat. And um, uh, Chess, you said um, the, today's meet was really good, but would you elaborate on how you have used in your class? Um, she just typed in, and someone says uh, it's Modo. Um, AJ, would you care to share um, how you have used it Modo for your class to, for the collaboration? Um, yeah, I've used Edmodo um, across primary school and high school. The primary school students were, use it slightly differently than the high school kids. The high school kids like to use it as a depository for files and accessing teacher work, so pretty much like a flipped classroom environment. Um, the chat collaboration-wise doesn't happen too much, and when it does, it, of course it has to happen in that um, communal space where everybody's comments and everybody's chat is, is viewable. Um, I have set off quite a few discussion topics that sometimes get taken up and sometimes they don't, but at least they're out there for the kids to look through. Um, the younger students are very good at knowing uh, the difference between making a comment on a running conversation and starting new comments. So they're learning they're learning how to make a conversation online, and they're certainly learning about tone. I like Edmodo because I can see them and I can either choose to correct what they're saying or, or something that they're saying, or I can delete it straight away. The high school students don't usually use it inappropriately. They just, in fact, they don't, they don't want to be sucked into something that looks like Facebook 
um, but isn't, that they know is you know, sneakily trying to get them to do some work. But they're more than fine to use it as a way to communicate with me and give, them, give me their assignments and then receive their assignment work back. Um, having said that, the particular school that I work in also offers um, a program or a, a tool called StudyWiz, which is a paid version of a learning management system. And our biggest gripe about StudyWiz is that there's no chat or discussion option. Like Moodle, it's sort of there, but it's quite clunky. Um, and I think Edmodo does it far more familiar for the students. Good, okay, thanks, AJ. Um, in terms of the, the um, Squalogy, I don't actually know how to pronounce these, um, these modern um, websites. But I'm just going to go back to the app share and just want to show you um, another discussion forum I had, which is slightly different to what I had before. Um, now this one is the, I'll just wait till it loads on everyone else's. So if you could just give me a smiley face when you see the, the page on my computer. Okay, good. Um, what I have created, this is for my year eight class, and I've created this one, is, which is your personal learning goal for Japanese. And I think it is important for students to know what they actually want to get out in the class. So this is the uh, discussion forum I have created. And um, I ask my students to just write up three different things, which is including short-term goals, which is just uh, what they want to achieve in the next couple of weeks, and more of the long-term goals, either by the end of this next term or end of the year. And um, the ongoing goals is in order to improve or in order to keep improving what they'd like to um, keep trying so that way it is um, not just a goal, but it's, it's something they'd like to just keep going. And as you can see, everyone has put their opinions and it's fairly easy way for me to see what they actually want to get out so that way it's giving me a bit of a feedback on what students want to learn, what students need or think they need to learn. And I adjust my teaching style and teaching content according to what they give me as the feedback. Um, so it's, it's a, a two-way um, thing in terms of me knowing what students need to know as well as the student knowing what they need to know and then I'm giving them what they need to know as well. So it's, I found it quite useful in terms of this one. And I'll just go back to another one which has just got a question. Uh, stop sharing. Now who has a question? The AJ again. Shingo, do you ask is it a non negotiable that the kids contribute or is it purely by voluntary participation? Um, or with my year eight class because that's um, my evidence class through my um, the, the teacher professional leave that I'm actually using my class. Um, so it is I'm trying to get them to put in something so that way they are contributing something and I think it's important for them to know what their the goals are so that way I can give them feedback and I can give them assistance. I can just my um, teaching style. Did that answer your question? Yeah, thanks. So you're sort of making it a non-negotiable um, minimum expectation at the younger age group. I've got some year 10s and I haven't, I've tried to steer away from saying you will do something or you will contribute to the online space um, because I'm really keen to see what genuinely engages them rather than they're doing it just because the teacher said so or there's a grade attached or there's an expectation attached. So I'm just sort of playing around with that at the moment because I don't have any pressure to do anything so I'm just seeing what works and what doesn't. Sorry, I forgot to press talk. Um, well, I used to use a uh, the Facebook group with my year 10 and year 12 class um, as a formative assessment because um, a lot of the students already have Facebook accounts. So it helped in regards to um, 
getting students to be involved. And what I did was I set up a private group with my year 10 and year 12 class. And after every lesson, what I do is on the way, on the way to, to and on the way home from school, I put up a question within the, the group site just saying that I, um, what is the meaning of such and such, or just ask, asking very easy questions. So it's a very um, casual way for me to check their understanding, to, just to make sure they have understood what I have taught in class. And it was really great for me, way for me to engage with students outside of class in a very educational manner because students were very familiar with using the Facebook um, outside of class anyway. So um, they got the, the notification from when I post um, any comments or anything that's um, related to the particular page um, in the group. So it was effective way for them to just see straight away in terms of what they need to um, know for the next lesson or what they have learned. So they it gave them a bit of an opportunity to um, express what they have learned in class. And I get the I used to get the notification pretty much straight away after two or three minutes um, after posting the, the question. And um, the, the student viewed it as a homework because it was um, still showing the understanding from the classroom and they were doing it in a bit more interactive way. And um, I used to post questions that are very simple and very um, easy to do. and um, the students were actually interacting with each other because they post some questions and post answers and the students were actually answering each other's questions and correcting each other's questions. So it was a really good way for them to interact outside class um, and they felt very comfortable um, even outside the classroom to be able to share their knowledge and idea and skills to, I guess, build it, the rapport and the relationship with their peers. Um, so that was a really good way for me to interact with the students. And this year I'm not using Facebook with my year 12s simply because they don't have Facebook account. So I wasn't going to force them to start using if they didn't have it already. So what I do this year is just use um, box.com, which is similar to um, Dropbox for those who have used it. And I'm not going to get into the, the box.com because it's, this one's all about formal assessment. but. Um, it has a discussion forum within and I was able to post some questions that related to any file. So for example, um, I might ask specific questions and students were able to answer those questions and they were able to upload onto the particular folder to show their understanding. So that was really good way for me. Um, I'm just gonna go to the next slide. And so this is what I had in terms of social media tools. So it's, it has a discussion forum. Well, I think a discussion forum is a very effective way for them to have a communication with each other and for them, for you as a teacher to post some questions and to show that they are understand, to, to, to get them to share their ideas as well as the, their understanding. So it's extremely easy and um, also very useful. Now, are there any questions in regards to the social media and how I use, or anyone else has different methods? Um, Louise, would you like to add something to what I said so far? Since your opinion? Um, I think I'd just say that I know the way you use the social media tools teaching a language. Um, I think it, I think it, the social media lends itself really well to and the way you give feedback. Um, you know, practicing, for example, their you know their can or you know whatever they're doing. Um, I would like to hear some more examples on maybe how people of other subjects other than the language might use social media and how they might give feedback. Um, now Danielle and Rob have 
um, which raised a bit of issue, like his concern about the legal implication. Um, what I used, or what I did use last year, was I set up a work Facebook account, so it had nothing that is um, was my personal information other than the fact that it had my name, uh, which is in Japanese, and all I had was just a, a video about a picture of me, and it was very separated from my personal life. So what I had was just a, a, my personal Facebook account, and then I had the um, the work Facebook accounts. So it was fairly easy for me to, I guess, separate my work and my social life. Um, Can I comment on that? Sure. Um, from uh, the perspective of administration at the school, um, I think there, there, yeah, there is an issue and there would be an issue in most schools using something like Facebook. Um, I know we've had teachers also interested in using Twitter accounts. Um, and in our school, and I think in a lot of schools, there's not enough, first of all, policy and education around using those tools. So if I was a teacher in this forum, I would check with principal class before deciding to use any particular social media tool because it may differ from school to school. But the other issue is, at the moment, you know, we have students going into some classes and using you know, um, Edmodo or, in our case, Schoology, and each time they go to a different class, they might be using a very different system to log into to collect feedback from their teacher. So schools really need to move to a consistent, I mean, a more consistent sort of tools that students, um, you know, are, are familiar with. So they're getting the, the same way they're getting feedback or communicating with their teachers. Um, there's, there's some sort of consistency uh, rather than having so many different ways that teachers are doing it. At the moment, I think it's, it works well because I don't think a large number of teachers are using social media or ICT um, you know, in, in ways they're communicating with their kids. But as we have more and more teachers get, in, get um, involved, it becomes more important to have more consistent tools. And I know someone before talked about their school having a study with, um, but obviously they said they didn't, they personally didn't like that, but I think as we, we need to find a system that is going to be some sort of, um, I guess, a compromise that more staff and more students can consistently use together and take away a lot of these concerns that we have about, you know, that safety online. Yeah, I think um, the, it is important for the, the school to establish um, what is acceptable and um, for those who work in um, the Victorian school, there is a, um, a social media use policy that is that clearly states um, all these rules and but it's, it's quite, it can be quite vague. So I think it is important for the, the I guess, the principal, assistant principal to establish what is acceptable and it's for them to actually approve um, before any teachers start using, I think. Um, now, I'm just going to move on to the next one, which um, kind of going off track at the moment, so I'm just going to bring it back. And the next one that I had um, in mind in terms of formative assessment tools is the online flashcard, which is um, the Quizlet. And um, can I have a show of hands how many people are familiar or have used the Quizlet um, in your class? before. So if you could just go down to the poll. Uh, yes, AJ. Sorry, Louisa. Is that a question or is that a yes or no? Um, I've got a couple of hands up there. And for those who are pressing the hand button, that's um, actually to the raise hand to ask questions. So it's the one next to it, which says yes and no. Uh, so I've got about three people who are not familiar with using Quizlet. 
Um, now for those who said use Quizlet or have um, uh, familiar with um, Quizlet, what's the method you have used before in terms of, um, I guess, the, in a way of formative assessment? So I've got um, Jacinta, Danielle, and Jason. If you could just, um, you can either come to the mic or you can uh, write in the chat box. So no one's going to come to the mic. I'll just let you type. Um, now, for those who are not familiar with the Quizlet, it's just the online flashcards, and it is very easy to set up. Um, you can sign up to a free account, um, which gives you a bit of ads, um, but it's not that nothing more annoying, nothing less annoying than any other things. I'm going to clear the poll at the moment. And I'm just going to go to the application sharing just to show you quickly um, what um, the quiz it does simply because it's fairly straightforward to use. And I just want to show you what um, I have actually used in terms of the, the Quizlet and the formative assessment. And um, can you just give me a smile face if you can see the screen. Okay, great. Um, now, as you can see, it's, uh, I've got the class sets on the left hand side, and um, at the top, I can either have the my set showing or create or browse. And so I'm just going to click on one of these ones. So basically, it is just an online. Um, flashcards which you can either show one side or both sides and just go through each one just like a normal flashcard and you might think well this is not like a formal assessment and you can also go through the different cards or to learn or to test so in terms of test it's not a test isn't some of the test but you can just go through and type in um, by clicking all these buttons. So it's in a way you're quickly testing to see what they're understanding. And it shows it's got things like uh, multiple choice as well as true and false. So it's fairly um, easy to use. And if you make your um, flashcards open, the students don't actually have to sign up for it. So that way it's quite effective and you don't need to worry about the students losing password or not remembering their um, password. And the other one that I, I use is this one called Scatter. It's basically it's a matching game. So what, what they have to do is they just have to show the understanding of if they're re able to recognize um, certain characters by matching and making them disappear. So it's once again, it's a very kind of engaging way to show that, um, that the students that are actually understood. And as you can see, you got the, the timer ticking. And it's also, you know, once you finish, it comes up with the ranking of the, each student if they have um, registered. So that way, you, you can see that they've, they've achieved something and if they're actually getting better or not. Um, another one is another kind of game type of things and it's called Space Race and once again it's similar to um, the scatter game so it comes up across the screen with the words they have to type in very quickly before it hits the, the screen on the right hand side so once again they're showing their understanding of certain um, elements that they've learned in the class and I did the session sometime last year on the quiz list. I'm not going to go through it at the moment because it took me the entire session. So uh, I'm just going to try and get out from the app sharing. So for those who would like to give it a go with the, um, the Quizlet, it's just a HTTP quizlet.com. 
and all you have to do is just register yourself and the student can register as well and it's all free. Um, any question with the Quizlet? Uh, yes, Rob. Uh, I think they're just wondering um, how long uh, you know, did that take to, to set up all of those activities and everything like that? Uh, well, in terms of the Quizlet, it's um, very simple and straightforward. All you have to do is I'll just quickly take you through um, just setting one up for you. So that way it's fairly easy for you to see. So what you see is just the, the button that says Create. And you just input the title. So for example, we might just might just write down test okay. So then you need to fill in the description. Uh, if you type in the subject when other people or other teachers, other users trying to use um, your particular set, then they can um, look for it. So for example, if you type in history or English or um, World War Two, it'll come up with um, the, the set that other people have created. So you can and reuse it. You can also um, copy it and uh, you can also go through other people's and change your bits and pieces around. So it's um, kind of fairly straightforward to use and you can either make it visible or to certain class. Now if you make a certain class the, the students have to be registered in order for them to view any of these. And you can choose the language. So it's, for example, a chemistry terms, Chinese, Pinyin, simplified, traditional, English, German, Italian, Japanese. So what I choose is Japanese with English. And all I have to do is just type in in Japanese characters. And then go to the next one and just type in what it means. And eventually, when you finish, you have to have at least three terms. And then just um, create the sets. Did I ask you answer your question, Rob? Yeah, thanks, mate. That um, it really doesn't doesn't look too hard at all. Thank you. Okay, and the last one is it's called on test modes. And I don't know if you have used test mode. It's very, very easy to use Quizmaker, which you can use to check students' understanding. And they have four different types of um, questions, so things like multiple choice, uh, multi-answer, true and false, and short answer. Um, now, has anyone used test modes before or are not familiar, not familiar with it? So can I just get a poll on if you have used test mode before or not. Uh, so blank screen. And now this one is very simple to use and I'm just going to there we go. Um, now in terms of the, the test mode is fairly straightforward once again. It's you just type in the name, which can be I'm just gonna type in this test. And you create. And um, with the questions, I can just go into questions and add a new question. And you can choose from true or false, or multiple choice, multi response, or fill in the blank. And once again, it's fairly, fairly, fairly easy to use. And you don't need to register, and you don't need to pay for it if you don't um, need a fancy kind of features. I'm just going to type in test and just type in true and go to the next one 
Um, it's going to be a test two, and I make multiple choice with one, two, three, and four. And go to the next one, and I'll, you can do the multiple responses well. And you can also do fill in the blank. It's very simple and straightforward. And I just click publish to go and publish. And you get this very simple URL, which is just the testnodes.com forward slash and the six digit numbers. And that's what students have to click on. So, for example, if I click on this, it gives you a very simple screen where students really don't really have to do anything. All they have to do is just to type their names. I'm just going to type as test. And they get all these answers that they have to go through. I'm just going to test all these. And it gives the score straight away. And as an admin, you can go into the test to have a look at how they did, go into reports. So as you can see, um, it gives the name and the score and what time it started and the time it took. And it gives you the overall result as well. And you can export it to CSV as well. So it's very simple to use and um, the student don't actually have to sign up for anything. You don't need to sign up. Um, just make sure you remember your URL as well as your password. So that's uh, another, I guess, fairly easy to use formative assessment tool. I'm just going to come back to the room. Um, now, are there any questions regarding any of these? Uh, Louise, would you like to add anything? Um, no, but I'll just actually just say one thing about those quiz things. The thing that's great about those is that when you um, are having to work with a group of students who haven't understood some of the content and you know, you, you're working with those, if you've got those things set up and you're at a school where the kids have got their own um, netbooks or you know, device, so easy for other kids to just move, you know, to either be, you know, consolidating their skills and you still completing those quizzes. Um, it gives you an opportunity to work with those other kids. So uh, I know once they're set up as well, um, and you've got a bank of them. I know Robbie asked at the time, but I find that they're um, they were very useful when I was teaching. Um, so um, well, that's all I want to say. Um, thanks, Shinga, and everybody for coming along tonight. Um, now, are there any questions that you might have with any of the tools or maybe maybe question to Louisa, for those who may have missed the earlier part of the session? Well, if you have no question, I might um, stop the recording now.